Hi, I'm Colton Andres, CEO and founder of Gremlin. Reliability and chaos engineering are things that are near and dear to our hearts as practitioners and as a company that has grown up helping to prevent outages and build more reliable systems. We're very excited to be able to offer this certificate program, which has come after a lot of feedback and advice in the market about a desire to capture the learnings and to show the progress and improvement that engineers and folks have made along the way. We have a great opportunity to be taught by two experts in the field, two folks that have lived and breathed this uh, throughout their career. Uh, Jason Yi, our Director of Advocacy, and Tammy Buteau, our Principal SRE. They're going to help share some tips and tricks with you today to help you pass the exam and hopefully deepen your chaos engineering knowledge. We're excited for you to be able to participate in the world's first certified chaos engineering certificate, and I look forward to sending you your signed copy soon. Thank you very much. Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming along to the Gremlin Chaos Engineering Practitioner Certificate Prep Session. We're really excited to have you all here today. Are you looking to become one of the world's first Gremlin Certified Chaos Engineering Practitioners? Today, Jason and I are here to help you learn how. So you might be wondering, why did we create this certificate? Given chaos engineering surge in popularity and necessity for reliability focused initiatives, we wanted to build a certification program that would allow any reliability focused professional to demonstrate their chaos engineering expertise, increase their visibility and advance their career with a chaos engineering practitioner certificate. The core benefits from the program are that you'll become a CE expert, you'll build your reputation and you'll further your career. How does it work? Anyone can sign up and then take the exam. However, you do only get two tries on your first go and you need to score 80% in order to pass. So we do recommend preparing beforehand by coming along to this session, reading our docs or attending one of our boot camps. We also recommend experimenting with the Gremlin product. So we're gonna talk through how to do all of those things today and you'll be really well prepared. I wanted to also share some exciting metrics. You'll be joining a community of over 600 certified chaos engineering practitioners. We've actually had over 2000 folks enroll in the program in total, which is really great to see. We're excited to see all of you enroll if you haven't yet. Now I'm gonna give you my top tips to help you prepare for the certificate. The certificate covers two different topic areas. The first is the theory of chaos engineering, and the second is practicing chaos engineering with Gremlin. Today, I'm going to show you my favorite resources that you can read, watch, and listen to for these two different topic areas. Remember that this is a foundation level exam, and we will have um, different levels coming, but Jason will speak more about that later. Let's get started. First off, go to gremlin.com. At the top here, we've got a number of resources that you can use to prepare and study for the exam. A really great way to learn if you prefer learning by doing is to come along to one of our boot camps. So click on boot camps and scroll down. You'll see we've got a number of different levels. You only need to do Bootcamp 101 to be able to prepare for the exam. It's going to give you some background and information on chaos engineering, but you'll also get to use Gremlin within the Bootcamp. So it's a hands-on experience and it goes for two hours. The next Bootcamp is on June 23. So that's when I recommend you register and come along. Just click register now and sign up for that. It'll be online. Alrighty, now let's look at what we can read to prepare for the exam. Chaos Engineering, the History, Principles and Practices. This is a guide that was written to really talk through everything that's happened over the last 10 plus years in the field of chaos engineering. And it also explains the principles of chaos engineering, 
why we would do it, who practices it, and how you can also do chaos engineering. So the why, the how, the what, the who, the when, that is all covered in this post here. The next thing that I recommend that you read is actually an O'Reilly book that I wrote with a few friends from Amazon, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and it's called Reducing MTTD for High Severity Incidents. You can get a free copy of this ebook uh, at this webpage here. We'll share the links in the chat, and we'll also send this to you afterwards. But definitely recommend reading this because it's going to explain how to apply chaos engineering to reduce mean time to detection for high severity incidents. Next up, testing disaster recovery with chaos engineering. A really important practice. This is a great one to study for the exam. Next up, we're going to cover the practical side of doing chaos engineering. So using Gremlin to practice chaos engineering and run experiments. The first tutorial that I recommend is how to install and use Gremlin locally with Docker Desktop. If you're using Mac, Windows or Linux, you'll be able to give this a go. This is also great because it will actually talk you through how to use the Gremlin Helm repo for Kubernetes. You'll then also deploy a demo application and you'll actually run a scenario on that to validate reliability. So this is an e-commerce store example. That's a really great in-depth experiment where you'll actually see some really interesting errors occur and you'll learn a lot from that. Definitely check that one out. Next up is the Gremlin scenarios walkthrough. Something that you can do with Gremlin is chain multiple attacks into a scenario. You can chain the same attack type, for example, gradually increase CPU to trigger auto scaling, or you could look at different attack types, like for example, let's spike CPU, then add latency and see what happens to our systems and services. Now we've got some important docs from gremlin.com slash docs. I recommend reading the daemon and client overview before you do the exam. Definitely check that out. There's some really important pieces in here which will be covered in the exam. Hint, hint. I also recommend checking out the command line interface document because we do have some interesting exam questions which can be quite tricky. And those are covered in this doc here. So definitely check that one out. Now, maybe you love to watch videos and that's how you enjoy learning. We've totally got you covered there. Jason's got a new series of videos on YouTube. Definitely recommend that you hit subscribe on his YouTube channel. One of the ones I really recommend watching is called What is Chaos Engineering? This is a great intro to chaos engineering for everyone who may be new to it. Next up, we run a conference called Chaos Conf every year. We've been doing this since 2018 here at Gremlin. I recommend checking out a talk by our CEO, Colton, called Chaos Engineering, The Path to Reliability. This talk is really going to help you prepare for the exam. We also have an overview video, which is pretty short, just over one minute, called What is Gremlin? Chaos Engineering as a Service. This one's also very helpful. And many of you have probably heard of Chaos Monkey, but a lot has changed over the 10 plus years since Chaos Monkey was created. It's now 2021. If you look at the history doc about chaos engineering that we shared earlier, that actually starts back at 2010. So it's been a really long time. But this article is going to show you how you can actually use Gremlin to create a scheduled shutdown attack, which is randomly shutting down different instances. This is more like where chaos engineering really started. It's evolved a ton since then, but it's good to know how things started off and then where things are at now to prepare for the exam. I also recommend watching this webinar. You can sign up for it on this website here, devops.com. And it's called Building Reliability One Step at a Time. That's a really recent one and that's going to help you too. Perhaps you love listening to podcasts. We've also got you covered there. These are some really good podcasts that I recommend checking out. There's a podcast that we run called Break Things on Purpose. In episode nine, our CEO Colton covers 
his view of chaos engineering and talks through Gremlin and what we've been working on over the years. That will help you prep for the exam for sure. There's another one from Workiva. Matthew Simmons is a senior product development manager over at Workiva. Workiva is a Gremlin customer. So this is a really great practical guide to how to use Gremlin to get great results, which is what that's covered in the exam. So you definitely want to know that. I've also done a few podcasts on different topics, which will help you prepare for a few of the more advanced topics, but you don't have to go into a ton of detail for this as you prepare for the exam, but you really can specialize in different areas. Like for example, database chaos engineering is one. And the other area is incident reproduction using chaos engineering. And this is using gremlin scenarios to reproduce incidents that have already happened to make sure that they don't happen again. Okay. So to get certified, all you need to do is go to gremlin.com slash certification and then click the green get certified button. This is going to load up CoAssemble, which is our online examination platform. You then just create an account, get started, and you'll be off doing the exam. Once you complete the exam, you'll actually then get an email from a different platform called Accredible. And this email will come from me, Tammy. And it will let you know if you have passed your exam, you'll actually have a certificate in your inbox. If you don't pass the exam, then you're able to actually try again one more time. And if you have tried in the past and you didn't pass the exam, it's great that you came along to this prep session because for everyone who comes to this prep session, we're actually going to unlock you so you have additional attempts to try the exam again. So thank you so much for taking the time to come along and get unlocked. We're excited to help you succeed. Awesome. Well, I'm glad I got to show you some of these really great different resources that you can use to repair. And now Jason and I are going to be taking questions. So please feel free to ask us any questions that you have and we'll answer them. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Jason and I work as the Director of Advocacy at Gremlin. As you prepare for the Gremlin Certified Chaos Engineering Practitioner Exam, and certainly when you pass the exam, you're going to ask, what's next? Certifications are a great way to show what you've learned, but just like chaos engineering, it's a continuous process. We'll be adding certification to cover Gremlin tooling, installation, and administration. So you can get a head start by using the Gremlin free account that you've already got. We'll also be working on additional education and certifications that will dive deeper into building applications and configuring and operating existing software and systems reliably. If you've got a particular technology or technologies that you'd like to see us cover, let us know. And thanks again for participating in the Gremlin Certified Chaos Engineering Practitioner Program. Hey everyone. So welcome, and thanks again for joining us. Uh, so as mentioned, I'm Jason, and Tammy is here with me, and we're going to be uh, answering your questions. Awesome. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for coming along today. We see we've got quite a few questions in the Q&A uh, section there, so we'll go through those, and then I also see some questions in the chat. So the first question is, does the exam have multiple choice questions? Do you want to take that, Jason? Yeah, yes. So the answer is yes. Uh, the exam does have multiple choice questions. Uh, that is predominantly what the questions are, although there are some other questions. We've picked what we thought was a really fun platform and we're continuing to explore it. So there are some other ways to interact, such as arranging things in the correct order. Um, so as we build out, or as we built this, we try to make it engaging. And as we continue to build out future certifications, we'll try to do more because we know multiple choice, uh, sometimes good, uh, but sometimes it can get a little tedious to answer too many of them. So we're gonna try to change it up and make things fun, but also a good way for you to show that you have this knowledge. Perfect, thanks, Jason. So the next question is, 
For certification, are you sending any voucher after this session? Thanks, Sandeep, for asking that question. So the certificate's actually free, uh, so you're able to take it completely for free. If you go to gremlin.com slash certification, you can find the link to enroll. If you've already tried the exam, um, as we mentioned, we're going to unlock you. So you'll be able to have an additional attempt. So we'll send you an email after this session um, to explain that. But yes, you will be able to actually try again. And um, if you need additional attempts after that, then um, please, first we recommend that you do a bit more study and then we'll be able to reach out to you as well to let you know next steps. But we definitely recommend that you try and study first before you attempt to take the exam. And it's very good to go to a boot camp. Um, so that's the information for that question. And then that really does ties into the next question from Uni, which was about um, boot camps. Please share a link for the boot camps. The link is gremlin.com slash boot camps. Um, and that's where you can find the link. So we'll share that in the chat as well. All righty. So the next question, um, Jason, if you could take this one, is what is the certification path that Gremlin has? Jason's been thinking about this a lot, so he'll have some great answers. Yeah. So that's that's a fantastic question. And as we're in the planning stages, we really want to hear from you. So uh, if you have any sort of software technologies that you think should be covered, uh, happy to be open to that. So feel free to email me. Um, I'm je at gremlin.com, and I'll post my email into the chat there uh, so that you have it. Happy to always have your feedback. But really what we're looking at right now is this is the first level of certification, and it's really just going to test your general knowledge. As you start doing this more, though, you're going to get the practice to become even more of an expert. And I think what a lot of people want to see is that leadership, right? Not that just that you know how to do chaos engineering but that you've had the experience and you can now start to lead teams within your organization to do it. So as we do this, we're gonna be working on certification around Gremlin administration, and then also about uh, building out your practices. How do you run game days? How do you facilitate things? Um, and then starting to dive into different technologies as well. So trying to make this valuable to you as you start to grow your career and ways that you can use and leverage this certification to advance your career. Awesome, thanks, Jason. So next up, the next question is, um, let's see, how does Gremlin compare with CNCF project Chaos Mesh? Yeah, I'm happy to take this one. Um, chaos Mesh, and also if you, uh, since the question mentioned the CNCF, there's also Litmus Chaos, which is a similar project. Both of those uh, as CNCF projects were designed around Kubernetes. And so largely they, they can only be used with Kubernetes, which is totally fine. It's a good scope for those projects, particularly around the CNCF environment or ecosystem, but obviously, not everybody's running chaos engineering. We actually, or not everyone's running Kubernetes. Um, we recently had a state of chaos engineering report. It was a survey of over 400 organizations. And we found that chaos engineering has huge benefits for folks that aren't running Kubernetes. And a vast majority of the respondents to that survey were actually doing just that. Uh, less than half of them had deployed most of their infrastructure onto Kubernetes. And a lot of them were using chaos engineering to actually migrate to the cloud and test that on-prem or monolithic apps as they were converting them to be microservices and cloud-based were using chaos engineering to actually ensure that their applications stayed reliable during that process. So all that to say, uh, I prefer Gremlin. I really like Gremlin and I used Gremlin even prior to joining the company, particularly because it's so widely applicable and I could use it not just with my Kubernetes app applications. Awesome, thanks, Jason. And we've got a few questions, um, additional ones just about the bootcamp. Could you fill everyone in a little bit on what the bootcamp is like if they attend it? Yeah, absolutely. So we run our bootcamps and they're primarily hands-on. So if you're looking for information about chaos engineering or how to do it and you're, you tend to be a bit more shy or you don't want to actually 
get hands-on and interact, highly recommend the videos and other resources that Tammy shared. But our boot camps are designed for you to really get that full experience. So what we do is we start with a little bit of information and then we break people up into groups of four to six people. And these groups, you will then take on one of the roles within the chaos uh, engineering practice. So we always recommend that as you're doing chaos engineering, there are various roles to ensure that you people have control over the experiment, that you have others that are watching what's happening and others that are taking notes, what we call the scribe. So we break people up into groups. They each select the role that they wanna do uh, within their group. And then we actually run through some chaos engineering experiments. So folks are able to define what they wanna do to a demo environment that we've set up for them. They're able to monitor that with the monitoring tools that we've provided and actually get that full experience. So we do a few of these breakouts and then we come back after each time and we share what we've learned, which again is a very important part of the chaos engineering practice. Awesome, thank you so much, Jason. So another question that we have is, Is Gremlin um, does Gremlin work for Linux and Windows-based servers? So Jason talked a little bit about this in terms of uh, what Gremlin supports. And yes, Gremlin supports a wide variety of different platforms. If you go to gremlin.com slash docs, you can see our compatibility matrix. And Gremlin works for Windows. Gremlin works um, with a lot of different uh, Unix, Linux, uh, uh, platform, so you can that will work too with a lot of different different distros, Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat. So uh, you can definitely try it out. Also works with uh, Kubernetes, OpenStack. There are two main different ways to deploy Gremlin. The first is directly on your server or your instance or host, and it, Gremlin also works across all cloud platforms, and it also works for on-prem. Uh, you only need to be able to reach the Gremlin control plane, which is actually in AWS. Um, but you can install the agent anywhere, directly on the host or as a Helm chart. Um, so that's another way to do it. And then you can also follow our install instructions for OpenShift too at gremlin.com slash docs. Thanks for asking that question. Uh, the next question is, what is the pattern of the exam? objective or subjective. So I, I talked about this a little bit in the study guide that we shared in the chat. Um, so that's on GitHub. If you go to github.com slash gremlin, you'll find a repo called certificate study guide. And in there, I explained that the exam covers 20 questions, which takes you approximately 30 minutes to complete. Uh, some folks might be faster. And the topics covered in the exam include the theory of chaos engineering and then using Gremlin to practice chaos engineering. So there are some questions which are pretty tricky if you've never practiced chaos engineering, which is why we recommend that you use Gremlin. Uh, definitely, if you're a Gremlin customer, you're all set. If you don't yet have a Gremlin account, um, then you can sign up for a free version of Gremlin, uh, which we link to. I'll share another link in the chat for you to be able to try that out, um, but that's possible as well. And once you do install Gremlin, then you'll understand how chaos engineering works, how you can run different types of attacks, um, how you can monitor those attacks, how you can stop those attacks, how you can view the logs for those attacks. There's a lot of uh, questions related to those types of um, elements of chaos engineering too. So I think quite broad when you're doing the exam. Um, and another question, is the exam proctored? And how many questions are there? So Jason, would you like to answer this one? Yeah, uh, so the exam is not proctored, but it is run through our uh, learning management system. So uh, that is tied to you. So we actually highly recommend that, uh, yes, you, you have resources around you, so you can use them while you're going through the exam. Keep in mind that the exam is limited in time and that there are 20 questions. So I believe you get half an hour uh, to complete it, and uh, there are those 20 questions. Someone else had asked in the chat about uh, what the passing grade is, as mentioned, uh, that Tammy mentioned in her video, uh, it's 80%, so you'll need to get 80% of those 20 questions right within half an hour. So the nice thing about that is it gives you a little bit of freedom. You should know the answers to these, and you should be able to go through them, but if there's something that you're like, I. I vaguely remember this, but I just want to confirm it because you do only have two attempts or three with uh, since you've joined this, since you get the extra attempt. You do have a little bit of time to go back to that resource uh, and just confirm um, 
that you've got it right before you, you do it or submit it. There was a question in here, Tammy, that I thought was particularly good that I thought maybe you'd want to answer. Sure thing. And it was about, uh, are you issuing digital badges? Yes. Yeah, so we're, we decided to actually use a really cool platform called Accredible to issue certificates. And that also allows us to issue badges. So we've had a few requests from folks that they'd like to get a badge for completing this certificate. And then they'd like to add that badge to their signature. Um, their email signature. So yeah, we're happy to do that. What we're actually working on right now is we're working with our designer to create badges and everyone who has the certificate, you will actually automatically get the badge once we once we finish the badge design and it will just uh, be at exactly the same place that your certificate is. So it'll be the same URL. You'll be able to actually see the badge and the certificate in the same place. So you won't have to do any work um, to get that initial that additional badge, which is pretty cool. So we're excited to provide that for everyone who passes the exam. Awesome. There so are the a few questions about recordings that I just noticed. Um, oh, yeah. For those who joined late and missed out, uh, we are recording this, so you will receive an email once the recording is available. There was also a, a question about recorded boot camps because I know there's not a whole lot that have been scheduled right now, and we're working to schedule more. So if you're interested in joining a boot camp, just keep an eye on gremlin.com slash boot camps. Uh, boot camps with an S, uh, so multiple. Uh, keep an eye there and we'll publish more, but we don't really record the boot camps because as I mentioned, the, that format is we break out into groups and you get hands-on. And so recording that really isn't so good for, for learning and having that same experience. So you, you will have to join the boot camps in person to take advantage of that. Yes. And another, so the next question from Vikas, for doing POC at home for certificate prep, can we deploy your tool with full access with a sample application as well in our personal desktop laptop? Yes, you totally can. Um, I actually recently wrote a Medium article about how to do this, so I'm going to share that in the chat. And this demo application is actually a banking application. Um, so let me just pull that up and I'll share that with you. There we go. So. In this um, demo, you'll spin up an internet banking um, application and it will just be locally on your own computer um, using Docker Desktop, which works on Mac, Linux, or Windows. So it works for everybody. And then you can sign up for Gremlin Free to be able to actually get that running. So that'll be totally um, possible to do. Let's see what the next question is. All righty. How do we see Gremlin in comparison to tools like Groundworks, Xenus, and Zabbix? Are they similar in diff similar in terms or different altogether? Um, so let me just see. Have you got these tools in mind currently? They don't sound like chaos engineering yeah. tools to me. I know. I mean, Zabbix is usually used for monitoring and alerting. Um, so generally, chaos engineering is we inject failure and you learn from that. So you run chaos engineering experiments. Part of that is the idea that you will want to monitor for the changes and the effects. Um, so we don't have a direct um, comparison there. We, we are two different tools that are used very highly in conjunction with each other. Yeah, great answer. And Jason used to work at Datadog, which is a monitoring and observability company. So he's done a lot of work in this space. Uh, but chaos engineering has been around for 10 years. Probably one of the most common uh, platforms you would have heard of or tools is called Chaos Monkey, which was originally created by Netflix 10 years ago now. But it has changed a lot in the past 10 years. Um, and then I see there's quite a few questions about um, the certificate, if it expires or if you need to renew it. So this is our foundation level exam, which is really um, just a practitioner level exam to be able to get you to understand what chaos engineering is, how to practice it, the theory behind it. And you don't need to renew this and it doesn't expire. We are going to have additional levels, which will be much harder. And those will be coming soon. And we are looking at the idea of having a proctored exam and actually enabling you to learn some very advanced uh, types of chaos engineering. For example, application level failure injection, where you would actually use our library and write code to inject failure. So it's very different approach, um, but 
this exam. Once you pass it, you'll have this certificate and this badge for life. You can add it on your LinkedIn. We're really excited to be able to show that you learnt chaos engineering um, at this time and we've taught you the history of it for the past 10 years. So that's pretty cool and more levels coming. So next question is, let's see, um, please sh share a success story for any of your clients and how this has helped them to identify issues proactively. So that's from Nishant. Do you have an answer there, Jason? Yeah, we've had a lot of customers who have seen a tremendous value from this. Um, trying to, there's a bunch of good ones. I think the best one that comes to mind because I was just speaking with them uh, was HEB. So HEB is a very large uh, uh, grocery store or supermarket chain uh, that's in Texas. And I believe they have some stores in Mexico and uh, throughout the, the US South. They had essentially uh, started with an online ordering application. So rather than going to the store and picking out your bananas and apples and your various fruits and vegetables, you could go onto the application and just select how much you wanted and say order and you could pay with your credit card. And then you would just pull up to the store uh, and tell them that you were there and they'd come bring your groceries out and put them in your car for you. This was all in 2019 before the pandemic. And so then the pandemic came and suddenly this little experimentation app that someone thought, hey, this would be a good idea, became the way, the, the number one way that everybody got their groceries. And so as you can imagine, they had this massive spike in traffic and when you build an application that's an experiment, you don't think about microservices and scaling to you know, tens of thousands of, or hundreds of thousands of users. And so they quickly realized that this was not gonna work out. Um, it was just way too popular. So they decided then to migrate to Kubernetes to break it down into microservices. Uh, but how do you do that? How do you keep that reliable, especially when everybody is relying on you for food. So they ended up using chaos engineering to begin to test as they broke out pieces of the monolith and made those into a service. Well, that service is now a dependency. How, do, how does your application work when dependencies are down? So they started to do a lot of chaos engineering experiments with Gremlin, things like dependency testing, uh, using black hole attacks and latency attacks and things like that. Um, and over the course of the, the pandemic, they've completely migrated. They have hit a point where they can handle huge amounts of traffic and they didn't have any incidents as they did that. So I thought that was a fantastic uh, customer success story that they've, they've uh, accomplished. We've had a bunch of others. Um, actually, if you go onto, I believe it's gremlin.com slash customers, we've got a list of all these use cases from other companies. Um, Companies that are, some are small startups, some are large banks, everybody in between. Um, so you can go to gremlin.com slash customers and read more about some of those uh, case studies. Fabulous. And so the next question is, what is the intersection between DevSecOps and chaos engineering? Are these two separate teams? Have you also seen DevSecOps engineers who are also in charge of chaos engineering? So that's a great question. Thank you, Starlight. Uh, definitely, we have customers who are rolling out chaos engineering as part of their DevSecOps pack practice. So this is definitely happening. Uh, I can't name, name their names. I don't have permission to do that. But we are hoping to actually be able to share this information on our podcast very soon. So Jason runs a podcast. If you go to gremlin.com slash podcast, uh, subscribe to the podcast and keep a lookout for future episodes. There's going to be some really interesting stories in there in the DevSecOps space and how chaos engineering relates to that. We see all sorts of different teams practicing chaos engineering, performance engineers, um, quality engineering, testing teams, site reliability engineering teams, DevOps teams, DevSecOps teams, infrastructure engineering, platform engineering. Uh, we've got product, product managers practicing chaos engineering with Gremlin to make sure that their products are reliable before they launch, which is really great to be very proactive. So we just see folks from all sorts of different teams and many different roles and levels. Jason, do you have more to share about that, all the different teams that we've seen? Yeah, I mean, so actually, as uh, Tammy mentioned, I've been running a YouTube channel. And one of the questions that I got was very similar to this was, 
should I be doing SRE or chaos engineering? And I feel like it's the same. Should What's the overlap or difference of DevSecOps or DevOps and chaos engineering? And largely chaos engineering is more of a practice. I, I generally find that we don't see too many people that their sole role in an organization is a chaos engineer, um, unless they're very large, just like companies like Google or Amazon, where you know they're dealing with thousands or tens of thousands of engineers. And so they have people dedicated to this. Um, for example, at Datadog, we didn't have a chaos engineering team until just uh, you know the, the last year that I was there. So about two years ago, two and a half years ago, it was just part of the SRE role. And that's really, I think the way that most people need to think about it is this is just another practice in the same way that DevOps engineers aren't just about continuous integration, right? They don't just do your deployment pipelines. They do a bunch of other work, but that's a key part of what they do. I would say the same applies for chaos engineering. Chaos engineering should be a key part of what you're doing if you're a DevOps engineer or an SRE or DevSecOps. Awesome. And I got another question about where does chaos engineering fit in the um, SDLC? So this is a great question that I often uh, get and actually gave a talk on this. What is SRE? It's on YouTube. I'll, I'll find the link and I'll share it. But in that talk, I explain how chaos engineering actually fits in a number of different places. So when you first start hearing about chaos engineering, you'll often hear that people do chaos engineering in production. That's where it started 10 years ago with Netflix. And the important thing about that is they wanted to make sure that while code is in production and running, there's no like strict hard dependencies on specific instances. So if I take down an EC2 instance, your entire application isn't going to break. That was the first initial use case back then, 10 years ago. Nowadays, a lot of people are practicing chaos engineering and realizing the value earlier. So this idea of shifting left. So yes, they still do it in production, but also they will do it even earlier than that. So they will do it in pre-prod environments, in staging environments, in development environments, and then even thinking through all the way to even earlier than that when you're actually planning what you're going to build when you're writing up your design documents, your requirements documents, figuring out what are the patterns, the chaos engineering patterns that I need to be able to pass to move this application maybe to the cloud, to deploy it and make it multi-cloud, um, to roll this out and make sure that it works with all these different services that we're deploying at the same time. So I think that's a really great thing um, to be able to think about. It's not just about one area these days, we're actually practicing chaos engineering in a number of different moments. Um, so planning, when you're editing and testing your code, uh, when you're actually deploying your code to different environments, you can then run automated attacks as you integrate Gremlin with your CI CD pipelines. And then as you're in production, when you're doing game days as well. So that's a really cool thing that's changed over the last 10 years. All righty, so the next question. Let's see. Um, what is the main feature that Gremlin offers against other tools nowadays? So there's not so many uh, chaos engineering platforms out there. I would say that's a really important thing um, to know when you're looking at different types of platforms. Gremlin is a SaaS platform and we have many different customers all over the world. A lot of really large financial institutions that trust us. So Gremlin is simple is safe and is very secure in how we practice chaos engineering. That's an important point. It's very important to focus on safety when you're doing chaos engineering. You can imagine why this is important. Um, one of our biggest features that is very popular and important is called the halt button. So what you can do is you can actually halt all attacks immediately across all of your teams, or you can say, I wanna just halt this specific attack. And that's a really good thing to do. Another thing that we have is we have a dead man switch. So if anything would go wrong, you just immediately stop all of the attacks running. Uh, and Gremlin also works across so many different platforms. Like I mentioned before, we haven't just focused on making Gremlin work for only Kubernetes. Gremlin works for Kubernetes and so many other types of platforms, which we're really excited about. Um, this is how we have customers all over the world that are using Gremlin every day to achieve really amazing reliability results, improve their mean time to detection, their mean time to resolution, to reduce downtime, to help train their teams for on-call. There's so many different use cases there. You imagine when somebody new joins your team and they're thinking, how do I learn about this system? So complicated, this distributed system with maybe 
you know, tens, hundreds of different services that are involved. Running a game day with Gremlin is a great way to learn about that because we have so many different types of attacks. There's actually 11 types of attacks uh, for that the agent can run, like packet loss, latency, shutdown, disk, I.O., memory, many different types of attacks. And what you can do, though, is you can actually chain these into a scenario. So you can create a combo attack. You're able to run different types of failure modes uh, one after the other. And when you think about being able to do that, that means that you can reproduce incidents that have happened in the past. So that's another use case. Say a really big incident happens, you go away, you do your postmortem, you then make all of your fixes, you put them in place. And what you need to then do is prove that your fixes actually work. So if this exact same incident happened again, would we be okay? Would we? Would another incident happen? Um, you can actually use Gremlin to reproduce the incident and check that everything is good. And then you can bake those patterns into your CICD pipeline. So I think that's a really cool change over the last few years that's happened. Uh, Jason, yeah, would you like to share any more things there? Yeah, I mean, I think so. There was a, the initial question of of how does this differ and like what's special about Gremlin. And I think you you hit the nail on the head with all of the features that we have and being safe. I think one thing that I would like to add is, you know, a lot of people have been uh, in the chat have been asking about various specific tools. Um, and the big thing for me is what I call the democratization of chaos engineering. The idea that if you're an engineer, yes, you're you're a highly technical person. And so there's a lot of things that you can do. But when you think about your organization, and you think about how can I get that that junior engineer, that junior developer on board? How can I get my my product manager, right? Because you're they're in, responsible for your product and ensuring that your customers are happy, but they may not be so technical. So how can I get all of these people involved in chaos engineering and understanding that reliability is important and practicing reliable systems or reliable practices. And that's one of the things that I love about Gremlin is as a SaaS platform, we've made it really easy for them to see what they're doing, to safely do it without necessarily being technical. So if you were, someone had mentioned things like Amazon's FIS, their failure injection simulator. Not everybody's familiar with how to log into Amazon's portal and set up an IAM role and, you know, write up the, the ARN or figure out what ARN they need to tar target, right? It's So we've tried to make it as easy as we can and as safe as we can to incorporate as many people within your organization because ultimately you want to build a culture of reliability. Yes, that's a great answer, Jason. Thanks so much. I really love that, the idea of building a culture of reliability. And as engineers, you know, we've, many of us have been engineers for many years now. We know one of the hardest things to do is to get buy-in from across your organization, to get everyone on the same page, to easily share the results of your work, um, to be able to collect all of that up and share that with leadership, to be able to explain why you need maybe more headcount on your team to do this work, because it's actually helping you achieve amazing results and um, reduce the cost of incidents that are happening, reduce the amount of postmortem meetings that you need to attend, um, reduce the amount of, you know, the lack of sleep um, that you get when you're being paged in the middle of the night. There's a lot of things that you can actually measure when you're practicing chaos engineering. So I would really focus on the idea there of, you know, what are your main goals? What are your biggest problems within your own organization? Do you just have way too many pages? Do you need to work on incident reduction or reducing the amount of noisy pages and noisy alerts? Do you have a lack of monitoring and alerting? Um, do you need to use Gremlin and chaos engineering to be able to actually harden that and improve your monitoring and alerting? Because what you can do there is you can inject failure to then actually test your monitoring and alerting and make sure that it works as expected. And that's a really good thing to do too. So always go back to what your goals are as a company, as an engineering team, as an organization, um, so that you can help your entire company as well as your customers, um, because that's what it's all about as well. And it is really fun to do chaos engineering. So it's also very enjoyable. Um, the next question that we have here is, do boot camps have access to Gremlin and Chaos Monkey and activities to learn them? So yes, boot camps give you access to Gremlin. We actually make it really easy for you when you're in the boot camp. 
And we actually have an attack within Gremlin that is um, very similar to Chaos Monkey. So Chaos Monkey is basically the shutdown of an instance. What we have in Gremlin is we have an attack called shutdown, but not only will you shut down an instance with that attack, you can also say, oh, I'd like to just shut down one pod in my Kubernetes cluster or one Docker container. So you can actually do even more fine grain work there, or you can select multiple different instances or multiple pods or a specific region based on a tag that you wanna shut down. There's a lot of different work you can do. Uh, but the cool thing about the bootcamp is we actually provide all of this for you. So we give you a demo environment on Kubernetes. It's hosted by us. We have it running in DigitalOcean. We give you access to Gremlin and then in a team, you actually enter sort of like a breakout room and you'll be able to run chaos engineering experiments together with full access. So you don't need to prepare in advance anything. You don't need to build anything. You don't have to have your computer set up to be able to install everything. You can just come along and use Gremlin with Kubernetes. So that's a really cool experience. And it's just in you know a few hours of your time, but you will learn a lot. Um, so we think that's pretty amazing. All righty, let's see. Other than the study guide, are there step-by-step -step video guides to learn? Yes. So we do have a YouTube channel. If you go to the Gremlin YouTube channel and there's a series of videos called Chaos Engineering in 60 Seconds, those are different videos that we made about each of the different attack types. So for example, if you want to learn about the CPU attack, you can watch a video of seeing the CPU attack running, seeing CPU spike. And then at the end, we'll explain to you what are the real world scenarios where CPU would spike? Like what type of an attack is this? And what can I learn from this? So I definitely recommend those study guides there. And the next question from Vinod, at what stage this practice of chaos engineering is usually done during the software life cycle, like before going to production, live or after? So I talked about this a little bit before. I'd love to hear your answer there, Jason, because it's a great question. Yeah, it's a fantastic question. And my answer is yes to all of it, <laughs> right? Um, you know, it's one of those things that largely we've thought of, you know, traditionally we've thought of chaos engineering as a post-production. You deploy to production, you test it in production. But ultimately, I think it, it really applies to both before, as you're starting to build the application, the people that build the best applications are the ones that know the most about how that application is going to work in production, right? Because as you're coding things, you can sort of imagine sometimes like, oh, I should have some input filters on this or... You know, if the database is down, I should write an error message. But you don't always understand the full uh, ramifications of failure states or what sort of failure states are possible. So as you build your application, I think that chaos engineering on a basic level is really, really useful. Um, and it allows you to test some of those ideas and, and to create those, those proper error handling uh, pathways. And then obviously there is the, you're deploying into production. So let's automate it in the CI CD pipeline. And Gremlin is great for that. We've got an API, we've got some SDKs that make it easy to automate chaos engineering attacks as you're doing that testing in your deployment pipeline. And then obviously you want to do it in production, right? Because production is never the same as your test environment or your staging environment. And then I think Tammy had mentioned it earlier, afterward, right? After you, as you've been running your applications, you have incidents using chaos engineering to really validate those postmortems. What are the things that you learned? You know, oftentimes we go back and we analyze a, an incident and we say, this is what happened. Here are the things we're gonna do to fix it. And then we really just wait around and hope that it doesn't happen again and hope that those fixes were the correct ones. So being able to replay those incidents and actually validate that what we've learned is correct and that we've properly mitigated them is super valuable. Yes, I definitely agree. So I had another question here about use cases for chaos engineering. Uh, so I think that's a question that we often get and something that we actually built into Gremlin, which is a great feature add is something called recommended scenarios. So when you log into Gremlin into our application, you'll actually be able to go to scenarios and then click on recommended. And we've preloaded scenarios that we think that you should use. So these are specific use cases for chaos engineering. Uh, so that's something that I definitely recommend you check out. When you log in, you'll see a whole stack 
stack of them. For example, one of them is auto scaling. So it's important to be able to test auto scaling before you use it because there's often quite a lot of incidents that happen due to incorrectly configured auto scaling. And it's never good to wait until you need to auto scale to then see if it works. So always better to do it proactively. And you can use the Gremlin CPU attack to do that. And the scenario is all set up for you. So it'll gradually spike CPU by running a number of different attacks and you'll be able to then see auto scaling occur and then auto scaling will go back down. So you'll uh, reverse that as well after the CPU attacks finish running. So that's what I'd recommend there for use cases. It's a great way to be able to learn quickly by actually doing. Um, let's see, we had a few more questions about um, the exam. So I'm just going to quickly answer those. So when will advanced certificates be available? So we're actually working on those right now. Uh, we are hoping to be able to release another level this year. And we're actually adding another person to our team who's really amazing. We can't wait to announce that. So more information coming soon. And she's an expert in this area. So that's going to be really great. So we're definitely working on it already. Uh, we're planning it out. And we would love to get your feedback. So uh, Jason did share his email in the chat. But if you have ideas for different certificate levels, we'd love to hear that. Um, we're currently looking at being able to build at least another two levels. So right now we have a practitioner level. Um, we're looking at being able to also have an expert level, uh, professional level. So we'll see what that looks like. And we're looking at different types of specialty certificates. So a lot of folks might, for example, practice chaos engineering with Kubernetes or chaos engineering with Kafka or chaos engineering with OpenShift. Uh, chaos engineering with windows so we're looking at doing that too but it would be great to get your feedback and let's see another question um i answered the one about the study guide how long does it take to do the certificate we recommend giving yourself 30 minutes to be able to take it you do get two tries and if you've already tried that um, and you didn't pass, we're going to unlock you. So you'll get an additional two tries because of coming to this webinar. And you can just use your same email to get those additional two tries. So that's all good there. Everything's fine. Um, let's see. How much value does the Gremlin certificate add to an individual having a chaos engineering profile? Great question. We asked our customers about this and they said that, that if they saw that someone had a chaos engineering certificate from Gremlin on their LinkedIn, and this was in their resume, then they would be likely to give them uh, a phone call to be able to talk to them. So they'd be more likely to get an interview. And these are with some of like the greatest companies in the US that are excited to be able to hire folks to practice chaos engineering. So if this is an area that you would like to get into for your career, then um, they are recognizing it as something that will help you get your foot in the door to be able to have an interview. And because many of our customers are already practicing chaos engineering with Gremlin, like then they can onboard you onto the team and you already know what chaos engineering is about and how to use Gremlin. So they're obviously very excited about that. Um, so that's what they said there. Do you have anything to add there as well, uh, Jason, about that? No, I think you covered it well. Yeah. Yeah, so people are very excited to be able to see this on your LinkedIn. I definitely make sure to add it. That's a feature that Accredible has. You can just click to add the certificate to your actual LinkedIn profile, and then it will show up um, in a certificate section. I've got it on my LinkedIn. If you go and check mine out, uh, you might not have the certificate section enabled. I actually had to turn mine on so it was visible, uh, but that's a good thing to do if you're looking for a new role in the future and you want to show folks what certificates you have. I definitely recommend that. We had a few more questions about lab environments. So I, I did share um, a link in the chat. I'm also going to add a few more uh, bits and pieces to the GitHub repo. So keep an eye on that and some extra info about labs. We'll just create a lab section there um, and share some info. But it is very quick and simple to use Gremlin with Docker Desktop. And then also Jason has a another way that you can create a lab environment. Did you want to talk about that, Jason? And we'll put a link there um, in the repo. Yeah. Um, were you thinking the Gremlin Playground? Yes. Which is, yeah, the Gremlin Playground is something that I developed, uh, I believe it was last year. Um, so I realized that for some folks, installing Docker Desktop might not be something that they can do. Uh, virtual machines are really easy, though. So I've created on GitHub the Gremlin Playground, which is just a VM image that you can download. It, I tried to keep it as small as possible. 
it's got Gremlin pre-installed and it's got instructions on the GitHub repo. So you just need to SSH in and the credentials are provided in that repo as well. So SSH in, enable the Gremlin client uh, using your Gremlin account and everything should be up and running. It has a really basic sample guestbook application that you can play with. So that makes it easy, especially for folks who are maybe brand new and it makes it really widely accessible. So I'm using a VM image that you can use with VirtualBox and VirtualBox is available for Windows, Linux and Mac. Yep. Yeah, so lots of really great options for everyone. Um, so you won't be stuck getting started at all. We really also love the idea of lab environments. Jason and I are big fans of using demo environments to be able to learn chaos engineering. It's a great way to get started. Um, I always like to say at conferences, you know, please don't go into work tomorrow and say, let's take the whole data center down. Like, let's do a huge failover exercise. It's always better to start small, start really simple, start with a demo environment, a demo application, learn with the guest book app, first how to do chaos engineering and then when you're working on your own environment start small as well so look at you know let's inject failure into one pod or one host one instance uh, before expanding out Alrighty. so the next question um i am pretty interested in setting this up on our distributed and cloud architecture maybe i need to learn before i ask these questions which i'll do from the provided links thank you so much happy to take questions that's what this is all for um, and Uni said, interested in Gremlin University, a place where end users can find resources and boot camps on demand. Yes. So we do have a resources section on our website. If you go to gremlin.com and then, uh, gremlin.com slash resources, that's probably the best link to be able to find everything that we're doing. So you'll see blog posts, webinars, white papers, tutorials, events, boot camps, everything's up there. So gremlin.com slash resources. Um, and a lot of folks are looking forward to the next 201 boot camp. So we don't have that scheduled yet, but um, Jason and the team will be working on putting that together. So keep an eye on that page to be able to sign up and subscribe. Do you have any other thoughts there to share? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, keep an eye on the page. And also because you've registered for this, we will be sending out more resources. So we are at the end of our prep session here. And I know that this webinar will shut down automatically when we hit time. So I just wanted to say thank you all for coming. Uh, as mentioned, there's a ton of resources. We've provided the links and this recording will be available so you can reference everything afterward as well. Yes. Thank you so much for coming along, everybody. We wish you luck with your exam and we can't wait to see you successfully pass the exam, add it to your LinkedIn, and then take the additional levels of the certificate. So thank you so much for coming along today. Thanks, everyone.